Our Islamic beliefs In our Islamic beliefs We find our way Guided by faith We kneel and pray each day Guided by faith We kneel and pray each day Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alam Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'awzu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillahir Rahman Rahim الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Welcome dear viewers to another episode of our program Our Islamic Beliefs and inshallah we'll continue from the last episode where we were beginning to discuss the honorable that the being of Allah Azza wa Jal we heard a few things related to the blessed Zat of Allah Ta'ala and in this episode we will continue and we will hear about those things which are lazim, which are necessary upon a believer to learn about. We must have this foundational belief regarding our Creator Allah Azza wa Jal if we want our Aqeedah, our belief to be correct and we want to save it from corruption. So inshallah in this episode, we'll hear about Allah Ta'ala and His Dhat. Before we begin, let's hear an excellence of reciting Durood Sharif Salat Ala Nabi. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, as mentioned in Jami' al-Saghir, Zayinu majalisakum bis salati alayya, fa inna salatakum alayya nurun lakum yawm al-qiyamah. Decorate your gatherings by reciting Salat upon me. For indeed your recitation of Salat upon me will be nur for you on the Day of Judgment. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. It is imperative upon every believer, every mu'min to have this belief that Allah ta'ala is alone, is one and he has no part. He is wahdahu la sharik. And when it comes to him not having any associate, this is in his that, this is in his sifat, this is having no associate in his af'al, his ahkam, and his asma. So we must believe that Allah Ta'ala is unique and alone in his that, his af'al, his sifat, his asma, and his ahkam as well. As long as a believer has these core beliefs, then he will be on the straight path. And the moment a person Allah, believes that there is another being who shares these sifat or shares the ahkam with Allah or the asma with Allah or uh, is a partner in the being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, then he falls into shirk. And of course, this is absolutely impermissible to even believe like this regarding Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala is independent. Allah Ta'ala is not in need of anyone. Allah Azza wa Jal is alone. He is all-powerful. He is the sovereign. He is independent. He is the one who we seek refuge in. We are all dependents upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala has bestowed qualities upon us, has bestowed attributes upon us, but they're not our own independently. Similarly, the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who, who have power and who carry out certain acts within the creation, this is only because Allah Azza wa Jal has given those angels the power to do those acts. He has given them a certain amount of authority. Our ulama have also written regarding the aqeedah we should keep in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his that to comprehend it aqlan rationally is muhal it's impossible meaning our intellects our rational can encompass certain things a lot of things rather and comprehend them fully but in regard to the Zat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's our aqeedah that our intellects are insufficient in comprehending and encompassing the Zat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is impossible 
This is muhal. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah An'am, verse 103, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, La tudarikuhu al-absar. Eyes cannot encompass him, meaning Allah Ta'ala. Seeing is another thing, and comprehending and encompassing is a different thing. We know that in the dunya, seeing Allah Ta'ala, this is exclusive to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Allah Ta'ala blessed the Prophet Sallam with this honor in that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw Allah Azza wa Jal on the night of Mi'raj. This was exclusive to him. This is from the khasais of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. And in the dunya, we know that Sayyidina Musa Alayhi Salam also requested this, but it was denied. Meaning, he said, Rabbi Arini Anzu Ilaik, O my Lord, allow me to see you. What was the reply? Allah Azza wa Jal said, Lan Tarani. Oh Musa, you cannot see me. If you look at this word, Lan Tarani, from the Arabic perspective, it's nafi of the Zat of Musa alayhi salam, meaning you, O Musa alayhi salam, cannot see me. But it doesn't mean to say that no one can. And we know that in this dunya, the only person who was blessed with this honor, this privilege, was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So this was a miracle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, that in a state of wakefulness, he saw Allah azza wa jal. So in para... 15 right at the beginning subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al-masjid al-haram min al-masjid al-aqsa this is thubut and evidence for the prophet alayhi salam night journey isra al miraj and in surah najm many many ayat which detail and discuss the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam his journey on this blessed night and him seeing allah ta'ala and there's also a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which the Prophet Sallallahu explained that he saw Allah Ta'ala on the night of Mi'raj. Sahaba Kiram Ali Murdan also have many aqwal. There are many aqwal attributed to the Sahaba regarding this. And they also affirmed and believed that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw Allah. Meaning they even asked, there are some narrations where they asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he replied, Ra'aytu Rabbi, that I saw my Lord. So seeing Allah Ta'ala in this dunya, Meaning, while someone is alive in this dunya, this is the khas of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa While someone's physically living amongst the people in the dunya, this is a particular of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam. And in the state of a dream, then this is possible for others as well. Even regarding our Imam, Al Imam Al A'zam, Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi taala, it stated that he saw Allah Taala a hundred times in his visions, in his dreams, subhanAllah. So it's possible in a dream. And in the Akhirah, as we know, believers will be best when we enter Jannah, inshallah. But how will that vision be? Allah Ta'ala knows best. When we see, that's when we'll know. Otherwise, uh, we are not to delve too much into how it would be like because we won't be able to reach the conclusion. And we know that the people of paradise, the dwellers of paradise, will not only see Allah Ta'ala once, but many, many times. SubhanAllah. So, going back to the aqidah, the point that aqlan, rationally, using our intellects, we cannot comprehend or encompass the thought of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And this is why in a hadith we're told, تَتَفَكَّرُوا فِي آلَاءِ اللَّهِ That you should contemplate to ponder upon the favors of Allah, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not the that of Allah azza wa jal. And in the Quran we're told, وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ That they contemplate over the creation of the heavens and the earth. So when we contemplate upon the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's when we gain ma'rifatu that, ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we contemplate upon the heavens and the earth, uh, the sun, the moon, uh, how the sun rises and the sun sets, um, how the moon appears and then leaves, uh, the night and day, the alternation of the night and day, the, the, the stars in the sky, the changing of the seasons, the changing of the weather, uh, 
it becomes hot temperature and sometimes cold in the winter. So when we do war, when we ponder upon these things, and these are blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will gain ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not to start thinking about the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala itself because this will develop wasawis, this will develop whispers and uh, certain thoughts that are detrimental to a person's faith. So we are to contemplate upon the works of Allah, the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mufti Amjid Ali Azmi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi says that it's not possible to rationally encompass or comprehend the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he explains, he says, whatever comes into the mind, the mind encompasses that thing. And as for the that of Allah, nothing can encompass it. Nothing can encompass the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, but in light of the works of Allah, his af'al, his actions, we can briefly gain an understanding of his sifat. And then using his sifat, that understanding of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can gain ma'rifatu dhat, meaning ma'rifah recognition of the dhat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, the works of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're evident and in creation. If we, we ponder correctly, we, we try to comprehend, we will realize that the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is manifest. His knowledge is manifest. For example, look uh, in Surah Ghashia, verse 17 onwards, Allah ta'ala himself states, Afala yanzuruna ila ibili kayfa khuliqat. Do they not look towards the camel, how it was created? وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ And towards the heaven, the sky, how it is uh, elevated. وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ And they do not look towards the mountains, how they are fixed, planted, how they are established. So these are the things that we are supposed to concentrate on, think about, contemplate about. And then, inshallah, we will gain ma'rifah of the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, when we ponder and we think, oh, Allah Akbar, this is Allah who has uh, everything in control. Everything is running perfectly, the system of the universe. Allah ta'ala is behind this. He is, his knowledge, his power, his qudra, his hikmah, all of these things. And that's when we gain an understanding of the that of Allah subhanahu but not to directly think about the that of Allah Azza wa Jal. So it is a process involved as mentioned. So just as the that, another aqeedah now, just as the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is qadim, pre-eternal, azali, abadi, meaning it will never end. There's not a limit to the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will not culminate. It will not reach its peak or anything like that. It's always existed pre-eternally and it always will exist. Similarly, the sifat of Allah are also qadim, azali, abadi, pre-eternal and everlasting, eternal. There's no beginning, there's no end. It's not the case that the that the sifat started here and will end here, ma'adullah. We cannot say this. Our aqeedah is that Allah Ta'ala's that sifat, pre-eternal, doesn't have a beginning. And does not have an end as well. One of these sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hay. The one who is independently alive. And every other life is governed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever Allah wants, he will bring someone into existence, grant that person life, that creation life. Or whenever he wills, he will grant death. This is the Mashiach of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He Jalla Jalalu says in the Quran in another verse, Surah Baqarah verse 255, Allah ta'ala is independently alive and he is the one who sustains others. 
In another place, he Jalla Jalaluhu says, Huwa alladhi yuhyi wa yumit. It is he who grants life and death. In another verse, Inna Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. Indeed, Allah is powerful over all things. Now, the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is some detail. We're going to hear briefly. There are some sifat which are known as sifat dhatiyah. They are hayat, qudrat, sama', basar, kalam, ilm, irada. Seven in total. Allah ta'ala knows everything. Allah ta'ala knows every atom in creation. Whether it's in the earth, whether it's in the heavens, whether it's in the depths of mountains, nothing is concealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing at all. So in terms of the sifat, Allah ta'ala hears. Sama' sami' Allah ta'ala is sami' But his hearing is not like our hearing. He is not in need of ears to hear. Allah Ta'ala is free from having ears. Allah Ta'ala sees. Again, he does not need eyes. He does not have eyes. He is unlike his creation. He is free from having a body or bodily parts as well. In terms of gripping, holding, we need hands. We need to use these hands. Allah Ta'ala is free from having hands, physical hands. So all of these bodily limbs, the face, arms, legs, Allah Ta'ala is free from them. These belong to us, but not to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala hears the lowest of voices, meaning in terms of tone, the most inaudible of voices. Those things which cannot be seen unless a microscope is used, Allah Ta'ala can even see them. As we heard, He's free from having a body. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. Allah is the one besides whom there is none worthy of worship. Al-Hay Al-Qayyum. He is uh, independently alive and he sustains others. In another place, as we heard, Allah Jalla wa'ala says, Wahu ala kulli shayin qadir. And he is powerful over all things. In relation to his uh, sama'a and basara, so the above verses were in relation to his hayat, his qudra. Sama and Basar, Allah Ta'ala says, Inna Allah huwa sami'u al-basir. Indeed, Allah is all hearing, all seeing. In relation to his kalam, his divine speech, Allah Ta'ala says, Wa kallam Allahu Musa taklima. And Allah spoke to Musa alayhi salam. And in terms of the seventh sifat from the sifat is atiyah, irada, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It says in the Quran, Inna Allah yahkumu. Ma yurid. That indeed, Allah commands whatever He wills. And in another place, Inna Rabbaka fa'alu lima yurid. Indeed, your Lord does whatever He wills. Now, the other sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so Allah ta'ala is alive, Allah ta'ala is powerful, Allah ta'ala is jabbar, He is ghalib, He is the dominant one. Uh, there's no naqs, there's no weakness that can be attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does not uh, need sleep, slumber, does not uh, have any relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah ta'ala will not perish. You know, everything else will perish, but Allah ta'ala will not perish. Allah ta'ala will not die. Allah azza wa jal is free from these things that I was just mentioned. Allah ta'ala wills and whatever he wills, it cannot be overturned. Nobody has the power to go against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he wills something, all he says is, Kun, be, fayakun, and it is. So these were a few sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One point to clarify here, that these sifat, although they belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sami' basir, but if they are used for creation, that does not necessitate shirk. We have to understand what shirk is before applying this term to something or someone. Because in the Quran itself, Allah Ta'ala says, فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا So we made him Sami'an Basir. Allah Ta'ala himself has used Sami'an Basir for creation. So, how do we understand this? When referring to Allah as Sami'an Basir, this means he independently 
hears and sees. Nobody gave him that power to hear and see. Nobody aided him in that regard. He is independent. And as for creation, we are only able to hear and see by the power given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the ata' of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas for Allah ta'ala is independent. Zati. So the same word, outwardly is being used for Allah ta'ala and his creation. And the understanding is as was just mentioned. For example, in another verse of the Quran, Allah ta'ala says, Inna Allah ala kulli shayin shaheed. The word shaheed has been used. Indeed, Allah is a witness over all things. Surah Hajj, verse 17. And then in Surah Nisa, verse 41, Allah Ta'ala says, So how will it be when we bring from every nation a shaheed, a witness, and we bring you upon all of them as a witness? Meaning, O oh, beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we bring you as a witness over all of them. So Allah Ta'ala will make the Prophet Ali Salam a gawah, a witness over creation on the Day of Judgment. The, the interesting thing here is Allah Ta'ala has used shaheed for himself and then shaheed for creation, meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. In the Quran it says, Anta Mawlana, you are our Mawla, our Master, Mawlana. And we know that in our day-to-day -day lives, we call the imma, those who are learned, the imams of the masjid, those who have studied, and they are ulama, we call them maulana. So the same word, but nobody objects there. Nobody says, how can you use that word for creation when Allah has used it for himself? Anta maulana. But we are calling our imam, or a learned person in our locality, the scholar, a maulana. So what we understand is that these words can be used for creation as well. But uh, understanding is different. So in regards to Mawla, Allah Ta'ala Himself says in Surah Tahreem, verse 4, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ مَوْلَاهُ وَجِبْرِيلُ وَصَالِحُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ ظَهِيرٌ That indeed Allah is His Mawla, and Jibreel and the pious believers are Mawla as well. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ ظَهِيرٌ and after them, the angels are also helpers. Similarly, with these titles that are given to the Khulafa, uh, Siddiqi Akbar, the one who is most truthful. And if someone objects and says, Allah Ta'ala is the most truthful. But it's not used in that context. And we know that this sifa of truthfulness has been granted to Siddiqi Akbar, radiyallahu an, by Allah Azza wa How can we compare it? Similarly, Uthman al-Ghani, when it's used for Allah, it's a different meaning. Allah is independent. As for Usmani Ghani radiallahu ta'ala, it's bestowed upon him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this attribute, this excellence. And like this, there are so many other verses of the Quran that we could mention as well. And we cannot base our aqidah just upon the zahir meanings and declare someone a mushrik or a polytheist for using that term for creation. So this is a lack of understanding, this is a lack of knowledge as well. Inshallah, if you continue watching these episodes, you will learn a lot. You will be able to rectify your aqidah, increase your knowledge. In the coming episodes, we'll hear again about Iman Billah, Iman Bil Rasul, Iman Bil Kitab, uh, Iman Bil Akhirah, and many, many other things, inshallah ta'ala. We should all learn our aqidah. This is the, the foremost knowledge that we should have. Everything comes afterwards, your ibadah and everything else will only benefit. If your aqidah is correct, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to learn our aqidah to rectify our aqidah, to strengthen our aqidah and make it in line with the teachings of Islam and the teachings of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Ameen bijahin Nabi Ameen sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Our Islamic beliefs, in our Islamic beliefs we find our way, guided by faith we kneel and pray each day, guided by faith we kneel and pray each day.